everyone, it's Southern Belle Canto. Welcome back to my channel. I have yet another book review for you today. I just finished The Cast by Daniel Steele. Um, I thought this would have some romantic elements, but as I, all I remember, I don't remember any <laughs> romance at all. There was like some flirting with our lead character, but I wouldn't call this a romance at all. It was more so generalized fiction or like fiction with a strong female lead. So as you can sort of see from the cover, it looks like um, the production of a television show, which is exactly what this book is about. So our lead character or heroine, I guess, is um, Caitlin or Kate Whit Whitlier. Is that how you'd say it? Yeah, Whitley. Whit Whittier. Or Whittier. Kate Whittier. And she works for basically like a Marie Claire sort of magazine. She might actually work for Harper's Bazaar. I can't remember. But she does like, um, I can't remember if there was Harper's or Glamour, one of those, but they had um, this woman that was called like Ask Jean. I haven't read fashion magazines in a long time. If I buy any, it's usually because I like the, the person on the cover. So like I think I bought um, on Anya Taylor Joy on uh, InStyle, and I bought the Adele Vogue, but I don't really read them anymore. I don't really keep up with fashion that much anymore, and they're kind of expensive. And at this point, I can see all like the fashion trends I want to see, either from a YouTube video or Instagram or just Google, you know. So yes, she works like as a sort of ask Jean sort of writer or psych psychological, she has a master's or doctor in psychology. So she basically answers people's problems. Like, um, there was Dear Abby, but those are more like generalized, um, help rather than like women's questions or help, I guess, like relationship, job, children, etc. And so, um, Kate is 54 and she's had a really wonderful and, um, affluent life. She comes from money like most of Daniel Steele's um, characters do. So she's basically set up. She's set up. And um, she's she has three grown children. All are like in their late to mid-twenties. And Kate Whittier herself, Kate, is 54, which I really found refreshing because so many books, the lead character is like between either 24 to like 32 and there's not much in between, sadly. I feel like the most common age for a character in a book is 28. I don't know why. I guess there's some stuff or shit to get, oh, or stuff together at 28. So, <coughs> excuse me. I guess that's the main, um, main reason why they put age to 28. But, um, Kate has decided that she wants to do something different with her life. So, she, like... I think it's the run right at Christmas time and she's about to go on her sort of Christmas break from work and she decides to like rent or buy the DVDs of Downton Abbey and rewatch them um, at home and so she becomes obsessed with the show and Kate decides she has a great idea for a television show so she sets out like the next morning and writes for 15 hours and basically comes up with the Bible of her show. So like the Bible of a show or even a book series is sort of like the rules and like basically 10 commandments of the storyline and how you want it to go. So say it was like um, Bridgerton or something, you couldn't just have Daphne be murdered in the second season or something like that. You know, it would go against the, the Bible of the series. So like you couldn't change things. You couldn't have someone break up or like the main goal has to stay the focus so it's like you couldn't have Barbie um I mean she did break up with Ken in like 2004 for like a summer fling with Blaine do y'all remember that when Barbie broke up with Ken I do it was it's still shocking <laughs> but yes um you can't really change things from the bible of your of your um your story or a television show, etc. So she writes the Bible. She writes, I think, some one of her friends is in producing. is like, you need to write either the first couple episodes and um, basically your Bible, so how you want it to go, the timeline, how you want it to 
basically end, I guess. Although, I don't think you have to know the ending of your show. I don't think... I'm not sure Shonda Rhimes still does stuff with Grey's Anatomy. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy anymore. I only liked it for Addison anyway. <laughs> but, um, I, I don't think you have to know your ending. Well, anyway. So she sets out and starts her script. She gets it, like, automatically or um, pushed forward for television networks. And... She meets a whole bunch of people along the way with A-list actors, um, you know, Oscar-nominated and winning actors. Um, she gets some, some really talented writers and producers and costume designers for the show. It's a period drama. The show she's come up with is called The Wilder Women, and it's based off of um, women in her life. So she, um, I have all these messages coming up on my phone and it's, um, distracting. And so it's basically set around World War II and she has, um, to basically, um, set out these characters. So the man is a top of the airplane business or has airplanes and he wants to go to World War II to help out and so the whole family drama is these strong women in the Wilder family that have like an airplane and aviation business throughout history so that was kind of cool and um made me wonder if her book she has a new book out called Flying Angels I think which is about women aviators in World War II I wanted this book help to inspire writing that story I'm not sure but, um, yeah, that was the premise of her show, and she meets a whole lot of interesting characters along the way, and they all have their own drama, so we have, um, one actress who is, um, really talented, but she has sort of a dark secret that she's hidden, and she has, um, a flare-up that's happening currently in her life. She's had some dramas with, um, writers of the show. Some of them want to really change her viewpoint of the story and her or basically her Bible, and so she can find some of that frustrating. What I did enjoy about the story was that it showed what it could be like to work for a television show and um, to be a writer for a show and a creator of a show. I thought that was really interesting. I always do enjoy how Danielle Steele puts, um, well, she usually, I mean, I think 100% she puts her women, her female characters, as the lead in first and she doesn't set them out in just um ordinary jobs like this woman here um it's very complex and I really enjoy that in her stories I can remember one of my favorite books by Daniel Steele is called The Betrayal and that is a female film director and I really enjoyed that a lot and this was cool too to have a a woman in television as well and be the forefront of the story um, overall, I give this a three out of five. I did think it was okay. It wasn't my favorite Daniel Steele. It just didn't have enough like excitement. I mean, it was fun to know about the workings of a television show and um, a woman um, writing her show and getting that push forward and how it could possibly go. I thought that was very interesting. But I do like a romance and... I do like a little more um, drama. I felt like a lot of the drama in the story was the side characters coming to Kate for advice, which I guess they sort of knew her from her magazine column. She was fairly famous from that magazine column. And so they sort of did come for her for advice. And because she was older, a lot of the actors and such were in their mid to early 20s and then in their like 30s and 40s sorry I had like the hiccups for a second and so that was interesting as well but I did like the story it wasn't my favorite but it wasn't bad um if this was your first Daniel Steele look for um the betrayal that one's probably my favorite Daniel Steele I do like is it called the cowboy there's one or no the the country star or I think it's called country think that it was called country that one was really good the mistress was very good so with Daniel Steele it's really hits and misses at least for me um I'm hoping I get a good hit at some point because I didn't really love the royal or what was it called royal oh it's it's on my shelf over there but I can't find it I think it was called royal or princess 
and I didn't really like that one as well. But I'm um, hoping I get some really good ones as well. I have um, Silent Night. I know I, I got for Christmas and The Affair. The Affair sounds really good. But this one was the one I got for a Christmas gift this um, past Christmas. It was from, we actually found it at Ollie's, which is kind of like a closeout store. And it was uh, regularly, you know, I never pay the full, but regularly $28.99. And they had it for um, $3.99 for hardback. So I got it. Here's the back cover. A lot of people love Daniel Steele's really ostentatious extra <laughs> Um, back cover, so she's got her signature ponytail and her, uh, like, purpley eyeshadow and her, like, pajama chic. <laughs> Love it. But, um, overall, it was a good story. Wasn't my favorite, but it's interesting to read about a woman in television in all the happenings that go on with running a show. So I thought that was really cool. Well, everyone, I hope, I hope you have had a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, as well as comment. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Southern Bocanto. I'm also at um, Goodreads. Should be Southern Bocanto or Albi, A-L-B-I. And it should come up with me on there as well. Well, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone.